In this series of videos, I'm going to go through with you training sessions that I've conducted before during this period. Hopefully, it can help you with more ideas on how and what to plan for your own athletes. Today, we are going through an online heat session that I previously conducted. I like to put my own spin and twist into very simple drills. Okay, very often I will incorporate mental skills inside. So here is one example. Check it out. Before we begin, maybe just to highlight here that I will usually have warm up, main activities and cool down for my session. But you will notice here that I didn't state any. But that doesn't give you the excuse not to include. It only means that I've asked my athletes to do their own mobility and prehab routine that we have established. And by the time they come online, they are all ready. Same for cool down after main activities. I would have had a debrief with them and particularly this session and then set them offline to do their own cool down. So looking at here, you can see that I'm asking everyone to nominate one item to add into our hit list. So sometimes I will prepare the hit list myself, but this time I wanted to get my athletes more invested and get creative. So I asked everyone to contribute. They can nominate anything from fitness like lunges, jump squats, to skills like leap and land, back pedal and jump, to elements of like Muay Thai or dances. As you can see here, I also got myself involved as they were choosing mostly fitness components. And I wanted to get them out of that box, you know, and know that as long as it's high intensity, it can be anything. I detected the work rest ratio, as you can see from here. This part, I wanted to make sure it's challenging enough for them without going overboard. So this would be just nice for this bunch. There's also the one minute break in between each set. For you, I think you can gauge this part for yourselves, your athletes. If let's say they are younger and haven't tried HIIT, I would suggest a work rest ratio of maybe 2 is to 1, like 30 seconds, 15 seconds break, 2 sets, before building it up progressively. Mm. Another tip here is that I used a fitness app called Hit Me to help me keep track of the timing so that I could really focus on giving technical feedback. Well, believe it or not, it also allowed me to play Spotify in the background, nah, which I did. And that makes a difference to pump up the mood and intensity and certainly make the session more enjoyable. I mentioned how I have used uh, apps to help me with trainings in another video. So I'll provide the link here. You can check that out, right? We went ahead with hitting ourselves. For the first two sets, I make sure they were working through the exercises like they are meant to. So I gave a lot of technical feedback like swing arms to jump higher, encouragement, affirmations like good push guys, keep going. That was a nice jump Rihanna. For them to push harder so that I can set the stage for later. After each set, I also gave some common technical feedback and corrections. And also my observation on how some of them can be more on time and be ready for the next activity provided some guiding questions on how they did for this particular set and what can they do to improve for the next set. As it was already part of my dark plot to incorporate and use this session to practice mental skills, I want to make sure that third set will be a challenging one for them. Challenging enough such that, you know, thoughts of giving up, what did I sign up for comes up, their muscles burn, challenging their techniques to buckle or them losing focus, etc, etc. Now you know why I needed to work them really hard that first two sets. You know there's this saying by Muhammad Ali, the great boxer. He said, I don't count my sit-ups. I only start counting when it starts hurting because they are the only ones that count. Basically, I wanted to tell them the bar is set even higher for this third set and they should continue to push. Then I told them I won't be saying anything except start, stop and what is the next activity. And I explained what's the intention and also got them to recall some of the mental skills stuff with it. 
So third set, I basically left them to their own headspace, their self-talk, their ability to motivate themselves and how they can help themselves to bite through the pain and burning muscles. Next comes the most important part which is the debrief, where most of the coachable moments happen. My first question was, how was today's session guys? Then I listened and clarified, so you might get things like I jumped higher in third set than first or I still couldn't quite control my landing foot. All these answers are great and I could add my observation relating all these technical corrections uh, when they say all these things. Then I would ask, how was the third set then? Especially having to handle it on your own. From there, you will realize that there are many insights to what they find useful or if they experience difficulty to persevere through or what are their self-talk like and how they motivated themselves or not. Did they practice positive self-talk, visualization or recall their goals to get through? And remember, I took notes. So I also added my observation like, I noticed faces crunching up guys, but still I saw you persevere on. So what do you tell yourselves? Some of them might also confess to you that they stopped. But then I will carry on to ask them then what did you do to get back on track? Hearing from them then guide them to understand that they can do this and that instead. From there forming the debrief and helping them make sense of the whole session by tying up the physical, learnings and mental skills aspect. Last but not least, I will also reinforce that mental skills like any other skills need to be practiced to be perfected. So if they think that they have handled that session well, give a pat on their backs. But if they think that they didn't, then it only means that we should have more tr tough training sessions. So this session, I would say, is more for older athletes, probably above 12 and has gone through structured deliberate trainings. So if yours are less experienced and younger, I will surely find a more appropriate work rest ratio, come up with the hit list myself, focus on their techniques, and the third set, instead of leaving it up to them, I will flash them a list of positive self-talk sentences or quotes from inspiring sportsmen that they can pick and use, or get them to visualize the toughest person they know and focus on what this person will say or do when they feel like giving up. During the brief, I will also use this chance to highlight how their thoughts can empower or psh, break them and introduce positive self-talk for them to try it out in another tough session. And how to change it up? Well, honestly, I don't usually need to do this with more advanced and self-disciplined athletes as I can totally just put it into the week's plan and let them create their own hit list with self-determined rep sets done at their own time. But if really we were to come together for this, the mental skills incorporation will start from first set, not the third. Means I won't be giving much feedback, encouragements or affirmation. They will handle that on their own. I will just be observing their behaviors and when necessary, remind them about some technicality of the activities they chose or mental skills that they have learned and can use here, like visualization. How while doing the individual exercises, especially skill-based ones, they can imagine the scenario that they will use in the game, like add the defenders into their imagery to deepen the link between what they are doing here and on court application. This is all I have for you today. We'd we'll love to hear from you all how you incorporate mental skills into your sessions. So take care and keep coaching. Mm -hmm.